Welcome back to the channel full of Wall Street engineers. I am genuinely impressed with the comment section in my previous video. Not only did we get some solid highly on discussions flowing, but we got some Tesla investors joining the discussion as well. Before we begin, I am not a Tesla hater. I welcome anyone and everyone to the channel, whether you agree or disagree with my content. But in this video, I will be following up on a request from a comment that suggested I go through specific numbers this time around versus stating that the Tesla Semi did not provide updated specs. So in this video, I'm going to do exactly that while also mentioning some compared highly on specs. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Ronnie. I'm a software engineer at a Fortune 100 company, and I've been annually profitable in the stock market for the last seven years. Full disclosure, I am not a financial advisor. I'm just an engineer with a passion for investing. With that being said, let's get right into the video. I'm breaking this down into five bite-sized pieces. Battery size and weight, true vehicle driving range, true emissions footprint, refueling slash charging time, and infrastructure details. This will be a little difficult considering our dear friend Elon is withholding key information to make this comparison video, but that's what Wall Street engineers are for after all. So with the little details Tesla has currently released and some digging on my end, I'm about to provide some key estimates to share with you all. The Tesla Semi is advertised to have a range of 500 miles, and lucky enough, Elon Musk took the bait of a Twitter troll attempting to gather more information on the kilowatt miles per hour Hour. This is important because if you give me a pen and paper with both the range and kilowatt miles per hour amount, I can provide you all a rough estimate of the battery weight, and Elon Musk did what he does best. He freely spoke up on Twitter and shared that the brand new Tesla Semi will have a rating of 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile. Sweet. Now all I need is a pen and paper to do some basic math. So a 500 mile range with a rating of 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile, that equates to a battery pack size of around 850 kilowatt hours or around 8.5 times the size of a Tesla Model S Plaid's battery. And with a quick Google search, you will find that multiple sources mark a Tesla Model S Plaid's battery pack size, which is about 100 kilowatt hours, has a weight of around 1,300 pounds. Multiply that number by 8.5, considering the new Tesla Semi battery is about 8.5 times the size of a Tesla Model S Plaid's battery. That comes out to around 11,000 pounds. I'm no fleet owner, but to tell a fleet operator their brand new semi truck is going to have to haul 11,000 pounds in batteries alone, it'll be a tough sell. But let's take this a step further. Ronnie, you can't just assume it's around 11,000 pounds by comparing another Tesla model battery strength and weight to the battery strength of the Tesla semi. And while that's true, this method isn't too far fetched, especially with the limited amount of information out there. But realistically, as you scale a battery size, I can agree that less of the structure that an individual Tesla Model S Plaid's battery pack needs will be reduced. So in all fairness, I'll provide a rough estimate of about 10,500 pounds in battery weight alone. Just to give you an idea, Hylion's hybrid system as a whole will only add a net weight of about 800 pounds to a pre-existing semi, and this information can be found straight out of Hylion's website. Now, the Hylion Hypertruck ERX will have a small battery pack to provide 75 miles of all-electric drive with the natural gas generator off. So for your average electric car battery that provides a 300 mile range, we have an average weight of 900 pounds. We want a third of that weight to get us 100 miles of range to play fair with the Hylion 75 miles without the generator. That's about 300 pounds in battery alone. So the hybrid and ERX system have similar additives, but trying to put the puzzle together here. We all know Hylion is in collaboration with Cummins and will incorporate the Cummins ISX 12N engine, which is 350 pounds less than the average diesel semi truck engine weight. Cummins engine being around 2,650 pounds, while your average diesel semi truck engine weighing in at 3,000 pounds. So, not only is Hylion using less batteries than BEV solutions, they're also reducing the weight of your average semi truck engine weight by using the Cummins ISX 12N engine. 
So in short, the Hylion ERX additives to make a regular diesel semi-truck into a clean, mean ERX machine is a lot less than 10,500 pounds of batteries alone found on the Tesla Semi. So fleets can haul more freight, not battery weight. Next, let's talk about range. Tesla has their semi-truck advertised to provide a range of 500 miles, and lucky enough, Elon released the 500 mile test video, which actually shared some interesting details. Throughout the entire video, you can close up on the speedometer to see that the driver is spending majority of his time way below 60 miles per hour. I'm talking less than 30 miles per hour, and if you rewatch the clip, there is less than 15 seconds of footage where the semi truck is traveling at around 60 miles per hour. It's a little sus, but let's run the numbers to get a more realistic range. To get a more realistic range, we want to divide the 850 kilowatt hour battery pack that I mentioned earlier in the video by how much power is needed to keep this electric semi truck going at around 70 miles per hour for 500 miles, which after some research and calculations, I got 1200 kilowatt hours. So we divide the battery pack size by the 1200 kilowatt hours estimated for the amount of power required to keep the Tesla semi going at around 70 miles per hour and multiply that by 500 total miles. And just a reminder, this estimate is based on traveling through flat surface. This gives us a true range of 354 miles, which in essence is about 30% less range than advertised. Now comparing that to the Hylion Hypertruck ERX with a total range of 1,000 miles, Tesla has another major category defeat against Hylion. But this does not discredit the amazing work that Elon has accomplished. And the fact that Tesla is targeting the short haul trucking space, which have an average travel distance of 250 miles, 354 miles can get the job done. So for those Tesla enthusiasts watching this video, I am not knocking down the Tesla Semi. I'm just shedding some light on the fact that the advertised attributes are a bit misleading. Next, we have my favorite category, true green initiative leaders. What do I mean by that? Yes, the Tesla Semi truck will have zero tailpipe emissions, but Let's talk from an overall well-to-wheel perspective. If you aren't familiar with what well-to-wheel emissions means, we begin to look beyond just the semi-truck, but looking all the way back to where did that fuel or energy come from to get that semi-truck moving and grooving, because what's the major point behind these government incentives and push for a green solution? We have a major climate change problem on this planet, and these new solutions are here to help. So let's examine their true green initiative. Let's start with the Tesla Semi. Tailpipe emissions, as I said, are zero. That's great, that's beautiful. But in essence, it's a bit misleading. That electricity being used to power that semi truck is most likely coming from a coal fire power plant. And before you head to the comment section to argue that the Wall Street engineer is forgetting that Tesla uses solar and wind power to energize their vehicles, that's just simply not the case here. In the United States alone, some states get 70% of their energy source from coal fire power plants and less than 10% from wind and solar combined. So coal fire power plants are a very dirty source of gathering electricity and seem to be one of the leading sources of electricity in the United States. And to give you a better idea, you're better off using a regular diesel semi truck than using the Tesla semi when the energy used to fuel the truck is coming from the coal fire power plant. Now looking at the Hylion ERX, which uses a natural gas generator to charge the battery on board to fuel the vehicle. The natural gas generator will produce emissions, but the overall well to wheel emissions footprint remains lower than the Tesla Semi, and in some cases can provide a negative well to wheel emissions footprint. Meaning you're doing better for the environment by driving an ERX Semi than not. To provide more details, the RNG is gathered via bio waste collection. That bio waste would have brought emissions into our atmosphere, but it is digested and used to create RNG. 
That RNG is then injected into natural gas pipelines, and that is used at fueling stations to power the ERX semi-truck. Now, if you're asking what about compressed natural gas, the CNG well-to-wheel footprint is still lower than the BEV route with the current infrastructure in place to gather the electricity to power these all-electric semis. But even then, in the United States, 64% of natural gas sold at stations were renewable natural gas, so these fleets could look forward to some negative emissions credits. Next, we have refueling slash charging time. The Tesla Semi can achieve 70% charge in 30 minutes, while the Hylion ERX can refuel in about 15 minutes for 100% refuel. And again, tell fleet owners estimates for 70% refueling time instead of 100%. That's just going to raise some eyebrows if you ask me. What's with the games you're playing? We all know the Tesla Model S charge times are faster to achieve 70% recharge rather than the remaining 30%. But that's a discussion for another video. So this column is going Hylion's way and it adds emphasis to the misleading specs of the Tesla Semi. Next, we've got the final spec for today, infrastructure cost. So to fuel a Tesla Semi, you'll have to tap into the grid, and most people think this will be an easy endeavor, but what these fleet owners often get faced with is the utility provider says, you can only deploy three to five Semi trucks before you begin to overload the grid, and you need to start charging upstream. What do I mean by that? These fleet owners will have to update their charging infrastructure, and that's if they've already have it in play. They'll need to upgrade their transformers and upgrade their electricity transmission lines. So while it seems simple at the surface, there's a lot of complexity to get that much electricity into your warehouse to charge these semi trucks. For anyone that I may have lost with these infrastructure keywords, let me share an example with you to help highlight the magnitude of difficulties there are to overcome with these BEVs. The Tesla Semi requires one megawatt hour of electricity for one single charge, which is a third of the electricity consumption of an average household for the entire year. One charge of these Tesla semis is equivalent to 120 days of electricity used by a single household. I'll say that one more time. One day of use of these trucks is equivalent to about 120 days of electricity used by your average household. Now multiply that single semi to thousands of semis. The grid is nowhere near ready to handle that and the cost to build the proper infrastructure to fuel these trucks are over tens of millions of dollars. Now, in comparison to Hylion's ERX, this semi truck generates its own electricity on board using a natural gas generator to fuel the battery that moves the truck. And there are over 900 natural gas fueling stations in the United States, meaning these truck fleet owners can adopt the ERX semi truck now and deploy the vehicles now with zero upfront infrastructure costs. And even if these fleet owners do decide to build their own natural gas stations on site, it takes on average less than a single year to build a natural gas station, while a BEV plug-in being a Tesla Semi, the infrastructure to build a charging station that provides the specs Elon has advertised will take over two years to build a single station to fuel multiple electric semis, and the cost to do so is significantly higher. Well, there you have it, fellow Wall Street engineers. There is so much more we can dive into, but I'll save it for another time. If there is another topic you'd like to see me dive into, whether that be Hylion, Tesla, or just stock related in general, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And it might be the topic of my next video. With that being said, thank you all so much for joining and I will catch you all in the next one.